can gut bacteria from an Olympic athlete improve muscle mass and physical function? So first, who's the Olympic athlete? That's Sing Chun Kuo. Now, Sing, Sing Chun Kuo's Aboriginal name is Tana. So for the rest of this video, I refer to her as Tana. Tana is a highly accomplished weightlifter. And we can see that by taking a look at her medal record, which is shown here. Now, most recently, she uh, earned a gold medal in the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. But you can see she's also won a lot of gold medals and some silver and bronze at a variety of other weightlifting competitions since 2010. So what was the experimental approach with the goal of addressing the question, can gut bacteria from Olympic athlete improve muscle mass and physical function? So starting from her poop, a specific bacterium was isolated and that's Lacti planti bacillus plantarum, which was then transplanted once per day for four weeks into young, which were uh, six week old male mice. And the mice were ICR mice as shown there on the left. And then did this specific bacterium isolated from Tana, the Olympic weightlifter, the Olympic uh, uh, weightlifter, did L. plantarum improve muscle mass and physical function? So what was the impact of L. plantarum colonization on muscle mass? Let's start there. So here we can see a variety of characteristics on the left, uh, including relative tissue weights for a variety of tissues. Now the relative weight equals the tissue weight divided by 100 multiplied by, by 100%. And for each of the tissues that were examined, we can see that it's liver, muscle, kidney, heart, lung, a couple of fat depots, including, including the epidermal fat pad, EFP, and then also brown adipose tissue, BAT, and then also the cecum. Now, there are four groups. First on the left, we've got vehicles, so mice that were not supplemented with bacteria from TANA. And then we've got three different TANA groups, TANA 1X, 2X, and 5X, which were increasing concentrations of bacteria that were uh, supplemented to the mice. And if you're interested in the exact concentrations that were used, we can see that there. So what was different between groups? So for that, we go to the trend analysis, and we can see that there were three that were significantly different between the groups. First was muscle mass. So starting with the vehicle, which had a relative muscle weight of 0.95%, we can see that all of the TANA groups, TANA 1X, 2X, and 5X, had significantly increased, a significantly increased relative muscle weight when compared with vehicle. So 0 0.99, 0 0.99, and 1.04% when compared with vehicle. But also fat mass was, was reduced. The EFP, the epididymal fat pad, pad was reduced. Uh, so first starting with vehicle, which had a EFP of 0.9%, we can see that TANA 5X had a significantly reduced EFP percentage of 0.74. But last but not least, we can see that the cecum weight was affected, or uh, so 2.66% in the vehicle. And before going on, note that the cecum is a major site of bacterial short-chain fatty acid, SCFA production, and I've covered short-chain fatty acids in a variety of videos on this channel. So if you're interested in that, just do a search and check it out. Uh, so in the TANA 5X, we can see that the cecum weight, relative cecum weight was significantly increased were compared with vehicle, which suggests that supplementation of this bacterium from the Olympic weightlifter may have altered, uh, well, in, uh, increased cecum weight, which may have altered overall the, the overall gut microbiome. So I'll have more on that in a minute. So collectively from this data, from these data, we can see that supplementation of L. plantarum significantly increased muscle and cecum mass while decreasing fat mass. So then uh, uh, the next question that could be asked is, as a potential explanation for these alterations, was body weight or food intake between the groups? And we can see that data here. So we've got on the left, initial body weight, final body weight, water intake, and then dietary intake in terms of grams of food consumed per mouse per day. And what we can see is that none of these were significantly different when looking at vehicle versus any of the three TANF su supplementation groups. So to address the question, was body weight or food intake different between the groups? It was not. All right, so what's the impact of L. plantarum on physical function? So first, starting with the relative grip strength as shown there, and the, that uh, relative grip strength means grip strength divided by body weight times 100%. And then we've got our four groups. So first, looking at vehicle, and then th the three different TANA 1X, 2X, and 5X groups, we can see that grip strength was significantly increased for all of the TANA groups. In other words, the mice that were treated with bacterium from the Olympic weightlifter had significantly increased grip strength at all concentrations of the bacterium. Now note that there's a plateau effect at TANA 2X and 5X, 
So they're not significantly different from each other in terms of grip strength, but both of those, Tana 2X and 5X, were higher than both Tana 1X and the vehicle. All right, what about aerobic exercise capacity? So here we're looking at time to exhaustion, and this is a swimming test. And once again, we've got our four groups, and then we can see significant, significantly increased time to exhaustion, so an improved aerobic exercise capacity in the TANA, uh, the TANA supplemented groups when compared with vehicle. Also note that plateau effect in the TANA 2X and 5X again. So the highest time to exhaustion was in TANA 2X and 5X, which was significantly higher or significantly longer than TANA 1X and vehicle. So from these two, uh, uh, from these two images, we can see that muscle strength and aerobic exercise capacity were improved in L plantarum supplemented mice. So earlier we saw that in, there was an increased cecum in mass in L plantarum supplemented mice. So was the gut microbiome altered? So for that, we go to a beta diversity plot, which is a measure of how similar or dissimilar that the gut bacterial communities may be. And then we've got our four groups as delineated there with the different colors. So starting with the vehicle, we can see that that projects to a different space when compared with TANA 1X as shown there. But then also note that the two highest TANA groups as shown in pink and green are in a different space when compared with TANA 1X and with the vehicle, which suggests an overall different microbiome composition, not just for TANA 1X versus the vehicle, but also for the two highest TANA groups versus TANA 1X and the group that wasn't supplemented with uh, L plantarum. So from this, we can see that overall gut bacterial composition in L plantarum colonized mice is different from the untreated controls. But what that doesn't tell us is which specific bacteria were different. So for that, we go to a relative abundance plot as shown there. And in terms of relative abundance, we're, here we're looking at the phylum taxonomic level. Now you can see that most of the relative abundance is comprised of two main bacterial phyla, which are firmicutes and bacteroides. So firmicutes in pink or red and bacteroides in, in blue. So when compared with the vehicle, you can see that comprises almost all of the bacterial composition, just those two bacterial phyla. But then for the two highest TANA groups, TANA 2X and TANA 5X, we can see that there was a significant decrease for firmicutes in red slash pink, but a significant increase for bacteroides as shown in blue. So collectively, we can see that Lactiplanti bacillus plantarum, which was isolated from the Olympic weightlifter and then supplemented uh, once per day for four weeks into young mice, positively impacts the gut muscle axis, or more specifically, it altered the weight of the cecum, it altered the composition of the gut microbiome, and then it improved muscle mass, but also reduced fat mass, so a net positive. All right, so there's a, a lot more to this story, including what are the effects of L plantarum on the gut muscle axis in aged mice? So data in young mice is interesting, but what about old mice? And also, going beyond animal models, what's the effects of this bacterium on the gut muscle axis in young and older adult people, and more specifically in randomized controlled trials that gave this specific bacterium and the potential impact on both the gut microbiome and on muscle mass. So stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in seeing that data, I'll post it uh, over the next few days on Patreon before I make next, week, next week's video. So before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, and these will be in the video's description, including epigenetic testing, uh, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee, and all of these links will be in the video's description. And note that we also have merch. So if you're interested in that, uh, check it out. That too, uh, the link for that will be in the video's, dis uh, video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.